Oh, is that me? I'm supposed to be up here? I'm sorry. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Good. Oh, man, nothing like missing what I've said. That's why that thing plays for me to get up here. Happy Easter, everyone. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, we're going to have a good time tonight. Um, there are two things I want you to know as we start today. Uh, first of all, uh, if you're not a follower of Christ, we believe that the best time to become a follower of Christ is Easter weekend. And I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that here in just a little while because we believe the resurrection changes everything about our lives. The second thing we want you to know is that we really do, as a church, believe that Jesus rose from the dead. Now, some of you may go, oh, you know, I, I believe in Jesus, and I, I like some of what he said. I mean, his teachings are great. But if you're going to push me to say, do I really believe he rose from the dead? It's kind of where I draw the line. So if you're here and you're a follower of Christ, tonight you are going to experience something where you can say, oh, that's why I believe, and I am so glad, I'm so encouraged if you're a follower of Christ and you say, I'm not sure I believe in the resurrection, but I believe about Christ, this is going to really challenge you to step across that line and say, that is the whole reason I'm a follower of Christ. If you're not a follower of Christ, you're here and, and you say, man, I'm just here for Easter. I come twice a year. I'm not really sure I even believe in this stuff. My prayer for you is that you will wrestle with this, that you will really, truly wrestle with this. And I want to tell you, you came on the very best possible weekend that you could come on because you get to see why we believe in the resurrection. Now, if, if you're only here because somebody in your family said, we won't feed you any Easter dinner or Easter food unless you go to church, I, let me just apologize. I'm sorry. We got a long way to go, okay? Okay. Some of you are there. Some of you are like, oh, man, that makes me feel better. I get that. So why do we believe in the resurrection? Is it just because the Bible says so? Well, you know, actually, the Bible doesn't say so. What it, says, what it is is a collection of writings. It's the authors. God used uh, these men and inspired them to write the New Testament and the Old Testament and the, and the Bible. So it's real important for us to understand where we're coming from on this. And, and we're going to look at some of those authors as eyewitnesses because it's an eyewitness account. That's why they wrote this, because they saw what happened. Now, I have a couple things for you here because some of you are going, well, it's, it's all about the Bible. Well, uh, there are some other historians that well, you may not know them, but their writings tell about Jesus' life and resurrection. Uh, Josephus was a, a, a first century historian, and he writes about and talks about Jesus' life death, and resurrection. And he never chose to follow Christ. Uh, you may know Caiaphas. He's a, he was in the Easter story in the Bible. But what you may not know is that he was never a follow of Christ. He was the high priest who actually uh, got Jesus crucified. And he wrote a letter just after the resurrection where he resigned his position. And in that resignation letter, history shows that we have a, a copies of it, the original letter. Uh, in that letter, he said, I'm resigning and I regret that I ever put soldiers at the tomb of Jesus because what they were supposed to prevent, they now confirm. And it wasn't just like two soldiers. He had dozens of soldiers at, at, at the tomb. You guys, you may know who Pilate is or historically you, you know that he's involved in Jesus' story. Well, he gave a report. He wrote a report after Jesus' resurrection to Caesar. And in it, he talks about Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. Uh, another historian, uh, Tacius, he writes about Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. In fact, he writes to King Nero and, and, uh, when Rome burns down. And you see in there how Nero was so jealous because Jesus was alive and he was the king. Because if Jesus is king, that means Nero can't be king. And we see this historical writings. We see another uh, writer, the Babylon. There's, there's so many writings besides the Bible. But over the next few minutes, I want to look at the authors of Scripture, those that God inspired to write Scripture. Uh, we have Matthew. Matthew was a tax collector, and Matthew was an eyewitness. He wrote a book that is placed in the collection of the Bible, and he writes about that he was an eyewitness to Jesus coming to life after he was crucified. Anybody glad that he's alive? Mark was a Greek of that day who became a follower of Christ. He wrote a book about Jesus coming alive. Luke is a doctor. Not only did he write a book about Jesus coming back to life, the resurrection, on the third day after he was crucified, but he interviewed people 
And he gave eyewitness accounts. You know, there were about 500 people who saw Jesus after the resurrection. John, he was a businessman, and he writes a book about Jesus' resurrection. Peter was his partner who was a fisherman. Uh, they were business partners. And if you know Peter's story, he's, it's an amazing story how he denies Jesus. And yet, he based his very life on the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. He writes about it. And then Paul, Paul knew all these guys. And if you know Paul's story, and we'll, we're, we're really going to dive into Paul here just a little bit this evening. But if you know his story, he was headed down a road where he was trying to stop the church. He was trying to kill anybody who talked about Jesus' resurrection. And what happened was he saw Jesus. And his life changed. And then I, this is my favorite. I think this is the greatest testimony about Jesus being alive. This is James. Anybody know whose brother he is? Jesus' brother. And, and we see historically that James was not a follower of Christ. We don't see anything about him uh, putting his faith in Christ until after the resurrection. I mean, really, if your siblings, you're trying to convince them that you're God, what would it take? <laughs> but after the resurrection, Jesus' own brother who grew up with him, he comes back and he says, truly, he is the son of God. And he, he writes uh, one of the books, one of the letters in the New Testament. So we're going to talk a little bit about the reality of the resurrection. Because the reality of the resurrection changes every. Write this down. It's the reality of the resurrection. See, reality forms how we think. For instance, uh, you may think that you can fly. You know, put your hands out and you can just go fly. You may think that. But when you stand on the edge of the Grand Canyon, how many of you, you're from Arizona and you've never been to the Grand Canyon? Anybody? This is amazing to me. Uh, you know, guys, people come from all over the world. It's just six hours from here, seven hours, five hours if you ride with me. Okay. I, I love the Grand Canyon. It is amazing. But the reality of standing on the rim of the Grand Canyon will change your mind about whether or not you can flap your wings and fly when you can see a mile down. You're, some of you say, well, you know, I, I just think that I, I can change my... No, it, when that cop pulls you over and you say, sir... Here's the real truth of the story. He'll say, great, you can believe what you want, but here's your ticket. You know, some of you are college students, you, you can say, yeah, but to the professor about what you believe, and he'll say, great, that's what you believe, but here's your F. You see, reality shapes what we think, and the reality of the resurrection changes everything. It changes everything about our lives. So, we want to explore, what does it change for me? Now, I, I want to look at what Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Paul knew all these eyewitnesses, the guys who, who wrote about Jesus' resurrection. He knew them. He walked with them. He lived with them. Uh, this, this, if you have your Bibles open with me, 1 Corinthians 15, I'll have most of the verses up here for you. Uh, Church Online, you can follow along as well. Uh, if you know the story, what's happening in Corinthians is people, it's 20 years later when he writes this book, and people are starting to talk about, maybe Jesus didn't rise from the dead. Corinth was a long way from where the resurrection happened. And if you, you know, it's, it's not like they had uh, the news to film it and, and show. And these people were saying, maybe that didn't really happen. So Paul writes to them about the resurrection and how important it is. Now, some of you may say, well, wait a minute. 20 years after the resurrection, how do we know his memory's good enough to write about it? Let, let me test your memory, Okay. 20 years ago, there was a lady who recorded a song, and the song became a hit, smash hit. The song was, I Will Always Love You. Who was it? Whitney Houston. Dolly Parton wrote the song. She, Dolly Parton wrote it. Whitney Houston's the one I was referring to. She made it huge. Now, how do, do we believe these people that they know that? Some, how do we believe 20 years ago? How about this? Some of you are movie buffs. You're not music buffs. So you're a movie buff. There's a guy named Steven Spielberg who made a movie 20 years ago about dinosaurs that changed the way we make music, movies. What? Jurassic Park. How can you guys remember that? Well, you see, even a 40-year-old can remember 20 years ago. <laughs> even a 60-year-old can remember 20 years. Some of you are only 25 or 30, and you can remember 20 years ago. If you saw someone you loved be crucified and come back to life, you'd remember it. It'd make a bigger impact on you than Jurassic Park or Whitney Houston. I will always love you. And so I want to know a little bit about your memory, okay? If you would, take out your phones. You may be new to live and you go, we take out our phones and turn them on? Yeah, turn them on. 
I want you to text me. I want you to answer this question. What is your favorite childhood memory of Easter? Because we're going to be looking at what Paul remembers here and what he tells us is facts about Jesus' resurrection. And we're going to tie this in here in just a moment because I want to really encourage you to make some new Easter memories. Okay, here we go. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Here's what Paul says. And if Christ has not been raised, then all our preaching is useless. Now, he's talking about himself here. Now, some of you may say, oh, Paul, that's a little harsh. We like some of your writings. Even if you don't believe the resurrection, you may say, well, you know, at our wedding, we like that one writing Paul wrote uh, from 1 Corinthians 13, love is patient, love is kind. That's pretty good stuff. It's not useless. Remember, he said, uh, these three remain, faith, hope, and love. The grace of these is love. That's pretty good stuff, Paul. You wrote some good things, Paul, about forgiveness and about getting along with people and loving people and not being jealous. That's good. It's, it's not useless. Paul says, no, if Christ has not been raised, then everything I've said, it's useless. And your faith is useless. We're going to come back to that because Paul comes back to it. He says, your faith, it's useless. And you, you can say, now, I, and I feel like this. I feel like, well, I have a pretty good life because of my faith. Even, even if I were wrong, I feel like I have a good life. But Paul says, no, it's, it's useless. It's useless. And he takes it further. He says, and the apostles, that's the 12 who followed Jesus or who, who were in close circle with Jesus and started the New Testament church. He said, they would all be, what does it say? They're all lying about God. For we have said that God raised Christ from the grave. So Paul says this, look, if those guys are lying about one thing, they're lying about everything. And, and, and some of us were going, wait a minute, there are some things though that they did that's really good. And, and I'm not sure I believe, you know, that Jesus rose from the dead. In fact, it's very easy for us to want to divorce Jesus' teaching from Jesus' resurrection. You know, that's why it's so popular to say, oh, I, I like this because Jesus dying on the cross it's a sacrifice for my sins. I like that. But when we are pressed and we say, but did he come off the cross? Did, he, did they take him off the cross? And then the tomb is empty and he's alive. You see, I, I, to divorce myself from his teaching and the resurrection, it just won't work. And Paul tells us that. But we say, I'm comfortable with that. Good man died for the cause. But to really say, no, the symbol for my life is the cross that's empty, and the tomb is empty, and Jesus has risen from the dead. That's a big step of faith. How can I believe that? Well, Paul says, look, if you don't believe that, your faith is useless. All the apostles are lying. And I know, we're going, well, I can believe some things, but he says, no, everything you know about Jesus, basically, and this is true of us. Most of what we know about Christ, most of what you know about Christ you learn from the guys who said Jesus rose from the dead. We say, oh, well, Jesus, uh, you know, his teachings on uh, serving others. That's a good teaching. I like that. You know where you learned that? From the guys who said Jesus rose from the dead. When Jesus talked about loving others as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. We go, I like that teaching. You know where you learned it? From the guys who recorded his life, and they said Jesus rose from the dead. Paul says, look, this is an all-in kind of deal. He's alive, and if he's not, it's all useless. So this Easter, I'm going to give you a couple things that the reality of the resurrection will change in our lives. And again, for some of you, this will just encourage your faith. Some of you, it'll really challenge you. And some, you're going to really wrestle with this. But there are two things that we need to allow the resurrection to do in our life. First of all, remove my past. Now, some of you, you understand that. Online, you understand God has just forgiven your past. Anybody glad for that? Yes. Now, the, what Jesus did by coming back to life, he removes all the guilt, shame, all the sin of my past. And, and this isn't like NCIS removal, you know, where there's always one thing that's going to, some, some evidence where you're like, oh, somebody's going to find out and then I'm caught, I'm guilty again. No, it is gone. It's removed. I have a new past. It's forgiven. First John chapter one, one of those writers, eyewitnesses said this. Let's read this together. If we confess our sins to him, he's faithful and just. Oh, come on, one more time. I mean, there's, there's like five times as many people as I heard, okay? With enthusiasm, you ready? Church online, will you guys please read with me? Here we go. 
If we confess our sins to him, he's faithful and just to forgive our sins. John was one of the writers who said, he'll forgive your sins. All you have to do is confess it to him. He also said, Jesus is alive. He rose from the dead. And Paul said in 1 Corinthians, he said, look, if he's lying about one thing, he's lying about everything. But he tells us he's not lying. He saw. He was an eyewitness. He didn't make this up. He saw. He knew. Live with Jesus. And he saw him come back to life. He saw him after the resurrection. Paul continues. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 17, he says, And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is, he's already said this, it's what? Useless. It's useless. And you are still guilty of your sins. But wait a minute. John said, my sins are forgiven if we confess it. Yeah, but John's whole statement is based on one fact, that Jesus is, a, is alive. And, and Paul says, look, if you didn't rise from the dead, you, you're walking around thinking your sins are forgiven, but you're guilty still. There's no forgiveness of sins because the forgiveness of our sins, the removal of all the guilt, the shame, all the junk, the sin of my past is based on the fact that Jesus is alive. By the way, if you're new here, that's how we got our name, Life Church, because the Bible says Jesus, or all the authors in the Bible say Jesus is alive, and John says we are made alive in him. So that's why we are a live church. Anybody glad you're alive? Yeah. Woo! It's useless. You're still guilty of your sins. He says, in that case, all who have died believing in Christ are lost. Well, what does he mean by that? You see, a lot of times Christians, as Christians, uh, people who know the Bible, we read this verse and we go, oh, that must mean they're in hell. And, and some of you go, wait, I don't even believe in hell. Well, you may believe in heaven. Uh, when, you, when you lose something, you, you don't say, you know, if you lose your car keys or your cell phone, that's important for all of us. And your wife, your husband says, where's your cell phone? You say, well, I think it's in hell. <laughs> we don't talk like that, do we? We don't think of that. And, and that's not what he's saying here. What he's saying is it's just lost. If your cell phone's lost, it's just, I can't find it. And, and I want you to see how important this is for our lives because most of us have had loved ones, a, a spouse, a, a child, a, a family member, a parent who has died, and you've been to the funeral and you've heard the stories, and you believe with all your heart, man, they're in heaven. And, and what Paul says, look, if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, they're just lost. You'll never see him again. But he's about to make the argument, that's just not the case. There's going to be a reuniting. You see, if, if I don't believe the resurrection, there's, there's nothing. And he tells us that. It says it's all based on Jesus coming alive. He goes on, he continues here in this verse. He says, and if our hope in Christ is only for this life, we are more to be pitied than anyone in the world. Paul says, look, some of you, you're giving your life to serve. You're giving your money away. You're believing in the cause of Christ. He says, if he's not alive, if it's just based on some good teaching, you're going to be pitied. You guys remember pity the fool? Some of you are old enough to remember the 18. He says, you're to be pitied. He says, it's, it's worthless. If Christ isn't alive, you're wasting your time, your energy, your money. He says, you're to be pitied if Christ isn't alive. Now remember, Paul is an eyewitness here. He's making an argument that Jesus is alive. Now I, I want to show, show you a couple pictures. This was before digital. So this is my family, my two oldest kids on the beach in Oregon. I'll show you another one here, another beach picture. And here's one I'll leave up here for a second. Same beach. Uh, we love the Oregon coast. Uh, we have family up in the Northwest. My wife's family is all from there. So we go up to the coast. And all of my kids have been to this one beach uh, many times. We, we love this beach. I'd tell you where it is, but I'm afraid you all will show up there because right now it's pretty isolated and we keep it to ourselves, okay? Um, so they've all been there. Now, I've watched all four of them and I've tried to cap capture it on video and film over the years, but all four of my kids, as they've grown up, they've all stood at that ocean Pacific Ocean, the waves are big up there on the coast, and, and they've all stood there and tried to stop a wave, you know, as a little kid. They, they didn't understand, you know, they didn't stop, you know, they didn't try to hold it back. And, and all of us would say, well, that's just futile. That's what Paul just said. He said, if Jesus Christ is not alive, then your faith is futile. It's like trying to hold back a wave. It's useless. But the good news is, he's alive. Anybody glad for that? 
Here's what uh, he goes on, and we're not going to get this far in the chapter, so I want to read this one verse to you. Here's what he goes on to say about how we should be pitied. In verse 32, he says, If there's no resurrection, let's feast and drink, for tomorrow we die. Look, if Jesus is still on the cross, if he's still in the grave, if Jesus is not alive, if we're not living in, Jesus is alive. The cross is empty, the tomb is empty. He said, we're not living, living there. You might as well party and have fun because not, none of this matters. But the good news is the resurrection, the reality of the resurrection changes everything. It changes your past. Everybody say that. The reality of the resurrection, the of the resurrection. Changes, everything. changes everything. It removes your past. Aren't you glad for that? So this Easter, let the reality of the resurrection remove your past. If you've never made that decision, I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that. Some of you right now are going, man, I love that part of my life, that I'm forgiven. I am forgiven. The guilt, the shame, it's all gone. Second thing, the reality of the resurrection reshapes my future. Now, you all have gotten your pen for custom built. Take those home with you. That's for you to keep and Guys, we got a screwdriver on one end. You got to dig that, you know. You, your motor breaks down. Your engine breaks down. You can really do a lot of damage with that baby. Woo. So let me tell you, we're doing a series that we're starting next week, and it is based on this next verse I'm going to show you. Yeah, girls, like screwdrivers too. <laughs> girls like screwdrivers too. I, I didn't say they didn't. In fact, I think this is a girly screwdriver. Okay, you know what? I know that just got me in a lot more trouble. (laughs) Okay, some of you men think that's a manly screwdriver. That's okay, but I'll bring in a man screwdriver. That's what I'm talking about. So we're going to do this, and I I, want to show you Ephesians chapter 10. We're starting a series next weekend that I would encourage you to be here for because God has reshaped your future because of the resurrection. Here's what Paul says. He says, we are God's masterpiece. So we're calling this series Custom Built. And I'll just walk over here real quick. You guys can see we have the frame of a motorcycle. Over the next five weeks, we're going to custom build a motorcycle up here week by week. Now, you won't see us building it. We're going to put it together during the week, and then we'll reveal it every week. And each step, we'll talk about how we are personally custom built. And we're going to start next week with the frame. What is the frame of your life? And how God has a custom plan for your life, your future. Because that's the resurrection. The resurrection reshapes my future. You, some of you walked in here tonight, some of you joined us online, and you, you felt like you had no future. You have no hope. You, you felt that emptiness in your heart. You're like, I'm always missing. There's something in me that's missing. You can leave here tonight with that all changed, knowing that God has a future and a plan for you. And I'm going to show you over the next five weeks how he has done that and how he's custom built you for that future that only you can live as we build this bike. So take that home. I think there's some invite cards. Invite your friends. We're going to have a lot of fun. In fact, next week is going to be a big party week. We got all the stuff for the kids and food. And this will be the best crowd to be at. It's Friday or Saturday night, okay? And I promise I won't miss my cue next week getting on stage, okay? Uh, Custom built. Here's what Paul says. This is our key verse for this next five weeks. He says, you're his masterpiece. He created us anew in Christ. And he's the same guy that says, look, Resurrection is so important because of who we are in Christ. Uh, so we can do, what's it say? What's, one more time, what's it say? Good things that he planned for us long ago. He has good things planned for you. And some of you have that feeling like, man, I just don't understand what my life is all about. We're going to show you because God has a good plan for your life. He has a future. And it's better, he, the Bible, uh, in, in Scripture, Paul tells us it's better than you ever asked or imagined. So we're going to look at that, how he's custom built us. Now let's get back to 1 Corinthians 15. Paul in the resurrection, he says this, but, everybody say but. but. Now, if you're familiar with the scripture, familiar with the Bible, the New Testament is written primarily in Greek, a little bit in Aramaic. So it's interpreted into English. The English language is very limited. In, in, in the Greek language, in the original, there are two words for but. The first one is day. A day means, if you were saying but, it's like, yeah, but. It's like little but. It's like not, not a big deal, you know. Yeah, but, you know, yeah, but officer, I know, I'm speeding, but can't you give me a break? And then there's the one that means a huge difference. And that word is ow. Now, Paul, he doesn't use either one of those words alone in this. He uses a different word. He he puts nueve nueve, uh, day with it. And it means this. In our language, it would translate 
uh, like this. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Remember, he, he just said, that where we, we left off in 1 Corinthians 15, was he said, look, your face useless if Jesus didn't rise from the dead. And then he goes into this and he says, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? In fact, I mean, and that gets our attention a little more, doesn't it? It's not like, yeah, but I think Jesus rose from dead. He says, no, are you kidding me? This is the reality of the resurrection. In fact, let's read it together. Christ has been raised from the dead. He is the first of the great harvest of all. He, he, Paul says, look, you kidding me? He's not on the cross anymore. He's not in the tomb anymore. He's alive. And this, the reality of the resurrection changes everything. It removes all the guilt, the shame, the sin of my past. It reshapes my future because he has a purpose and a plan for me. He's custom built me. Paul says, are you kidding me? This is the reality. The people in Corinth were starting to say, yeah, we want to believe the rules and regulations and all the good stuff that Jesus taught, but we're not sure about the resurrection. And Paul, later on, he actually gives them an invitation because there are hundreds of people still living at this time in Jerusalem. And he says, come down and talk to them. They're eyewitnesses. These guys were eyewitnesses. Can you imagine for a moment, some of you, as you walked in these doors, and you have been just burdened with guilt from the things of your past. You have shame because of things you've either done or, or things that have been done to you. And, and it just weighs on you. Or, or maybe you walked in and you, you joined us and you're like, I, there's just always something missing. It doesn't matter how much I make, how many toys I get, what relationship I'm in, there's something missing. Can you imagine leaving here this evening and all of that's just gone? It's forgiven. It's removed. And, and no NCIS, nobody's going to be able to find anything because Jesus says, I remove it all because of what I did on the cross and what empowers that death is my resurrection. Can, can you imagine how that changes the lives of people around you? Think through the concentric circles of relationships, how your family's changed because they, they know you're hopeless. They know what you're living with. Some of you have come in here, you've joined us online, and you came and you said, you know, I just don't see the point in the future, hopelessness. And I can tell you, that's where I lived. Before I met Jesus Christ, I lived in absolute hopelessness. That would be my biggest concern is that I would ever go back there. But when I met Christ, I realized he reshaped my future. Can you imagine walking out these doors with the idea that God has a plan for me and it's good. It's better than I can even imagine. He's custom built me with a future. That's what he has for you because of the resurrection, because of what he did, because God the Father raised Jesus from the dead. Now I asked you earlier, and I want to, just kind of read some of these. I asked you, we're talking about your memory because Paul wrote this 20 years after the resurrection. Some of you, your favorite Easter memory. Grandmother's Easter baskets and going to my grandmother's. That's good memory, isn't it? My dad made sunglasses for my sister and I from cardboard and purple cellophane. Does that still exist? For, oh, from our baskets. Well, that still shows up in Easter baskets. That, man, there's so many of you responded. Somebody said, my favorite childhood Easter memory is waking up with my little brother and seeing Easter baskets and uh, coming home to Easter dinner, getting a new dress and shoes and a hat when I was a kid. Well, that's scary. That's from Pastor Mike. <laughs> Not really. I, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding you, Mike. I know you're going to be back up here and you get the last, you get to say the last thing here. Uh, so several of you talked about uh, the just candy. Somebody said here, just being able to eat all the chocolate I wanted. Anybody good for that? Ooh, I'm digging that part. You know, I've been trying to lose weight this last week, getting ready for Easter this week. Um, somebody from online said, my favorite memory was attending church with my cousins in the Easter dresses our grandmother made for us. Somebody else, Easter bunnies, uh, hunting for Easter eggs. I heard somebody the other day talk about having, finding $100 bills in Easter eggs. I would think I would like that Easter egg hunt, wouldn't you? <laughs> Listen, the reason you're here to, today, tonight, what I want you to leave with is new Easter memories. You see, I, I, I want you to leave and, and say, I got a new favorite memory. 
Easter 2013 was the day that Jesus Christ removed all of my past, the guilt, the shame, everything, the sin. And for some of you, you've been followers of Christ for a long time, and this has encouraged you. Uh, maybe you're, you weren't really sure why we believe the resurrection and the eyewitnesses and what they said throughout writing the scripture and what God did. This encouraged you, but you've never really believed that God has a future for you. And my desire for you tonight is that you will make a new Easter, favorite Easter memory and let God reshape your future, future because he's custom built you. Now, if you would, take out your connection cards. I have mine already filled out for this week. And th there are some next steps on here. There's a little box on the back. If you're newer with us, Church Online, you have this as well. And I want you, if you would, to just fill out one of these and say, I'm going to live in the reality of the resurrection by, that is, you're allowing Christ to remove all of the past, the guilt, the shame, and the sin. If you're making that decision, I want to pray for you here in just a moment. It's a place of freedom. Everybody say freedom. freedom. That's what he has for you. Second, I am going to, maybe you've just been encouraged, you're a follower of Christ. I want to live in the reality of the resurrection by trusting Jesus to reshape my future. The reality of the resurrection changes everything. And we're going to talk about it for five weeks here and just talk about how he's custom built you. He has shaped your future. You don't want to miss that. And I'm going to give you one more. I'm just going to ask you to make a commitment to attend custom built next weekend because God has a future and plan for you. Let this be the Easter that you start a new memory about your future and your past. Would you pray with me? Father, in Jesus' name, as we come to this point in the service, the end of this talk, you've been speaking to some hearts, people online, people here in the auditorium. There are some folks who walked in these doors that would say, you know, I, I walked in with guilt and shame and sin, and I, I don't even like come to church because I'm afraid of what people will think or what God thinks of me. But Lord, you... Not only did you die, but you rose again, and we celebrate that because the power of the resurrection is what forgives all the junk of our past. And if that's you, I just want to invite you to pray this prayer right where you're at at home. Just say, Lord, I want to invite you into my life. I'm asking you this Easter for a new memory that you would remove all of my past, the guilt, the shame, the sin, all the junk. Set me free. Help me to begin a relationship with you. Now, wherever you're at on your spiritual journey as we're praying, that you would make this decision. Say, Lord, I believe the resurrection reshapes my future. You have a plan for me. And I want to know what that is. I want to be on that journey. I choose that in my life right now. Would you help me, Lord, to understand how you've custom made me and you have custom built a plan for my life. I want to live in the fulfillment, the satisfaction of that life that I have in you. Lord, I pray for all of us this week that as we live this out, as we walk this out, Lord, that you would remind us of the power of the resurrection and how the reality of the resurrection changes everything in our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. If you would, drop those cards in the offering plate. I want to be praying for you this week. I look forward to seeing you next week as we start Custom Built. I'm going to turn the service over to Phil, Church Online, and Mike, the guy who got it. Thank you, Jeff. That was awesome. You know, I just love Easter because it really does uh, paint a picture of a new beginning for us all. Uh, our past can be forgiven and we can get a fresh start. So I hope that you'll take Jeff up on that next step. Watching online, if you're watching on the Streaming Church TV platform with all the different links, the Prayer Next Step Connection card, you can click on that. Indicate that you're going to take that next step. We have a team of people that will pray for you and with you uh, throughout the week here and throughout the weeks to come. And if maybe you have somebody else that you know needs prayer for healing or or, or some other area of their life, the prayer next step connection card is a click. You can just click it right now. It will not take you away from the live service. It just opens up into another window. So I hope that you'll do that. And, of course, there's a new series we're starting off next weekend, and it's called Custom Built. I'm going to show you a video for that in just a moment or so. Uh, but uh, I do want to remind our viewers here in the Arizona area, in the Tucson, Arizona area, we have two services for Easter tomorrow, 930 as well as 11. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, online, of course, you can watch that. That's Arizona time. But if you're in the Tucson, Arizona area, uh, please come and check us out. And uh, you can find directions by going to 
AliveChurch.com. And again, two services tomorrow. And then next weekend, we're having this big event next weekend called Custom Built. All sorts of stuff. Uh, food, games, stuff for the kids. Uh, lots of cool stuff happening the weekend after next. So that's called Custom Built. That's next weekend. But this weekend, of course, is Easter weekend. We're so glad that you're with us, and we hope that we can pray for you and hope you've enjoyed the service. Now, if you just joined us, it will be archived online. You can watch it again going to AliveChurch.com, uh, or you could come and uh, watch it live uh, either on your computer or come here, as I've said before. So well, my name is Phil Thompson. I'm the Church Online Pastor. If I can help you with anything, uh, please let me know. Don Young is here. He's our web host. And the whole team here at Alive Church is, is, is standing here for you. I and mean, we want to be with you and help you through difficult times, not just on the weekends, but during the week as well. So make sure you use that connection card to contact us with any questions you might have. We'd love to hear your feedback. Watch this video. And that's happening next weekend, Custom Build. I hope that you will join us. It's they're going to be building a motorcycle on the platform. If you watched the uh, live service, you saw uh, the frame was on the platform. And I have a bike. I've got lots of toys. I've got a Jeep Scrambler, and I've got a motorcycle. So I'm going to be driving in here next weekend. And uh, maybe they can work on my bike as well. It needs a tune-up. All right, so that's next weekend. But Easter weekend is happening, still happening, of course. And so, as I said earlier, please feel free to join us online tomorrow morning, uh, 9.30 as well as 11, Arizona time, Mountain Standard Time, or you can come and visit us. We'd love to have you here. And again, the directions for that are AliveChurch.com. All right, well, you have yourself a great evening. Thanks for being with us on behalf of Don Young and uh, Michael Gray and Jason Marston and uh, Sharon and, and uh, gosh, Michael, all the guys behind the scenes. I'm Phil Thompson. Have a great evening. Happy Easter.